Well, this is more stuff on the general subject of the purpose of life. It's basically a response video to Matt. And, uh, another video by the mystic. Um, I'll probably post a link over there. Um, you know, it's interesting. It's just too bad we're, you know, we're having this, I think, very worthwhile discussion. And, uh, you know, we're all, not, not, none of us getting enough views to really... <laughs> make it worth it I mean, if not reaching enough people with the conversation um, and it's a conversation I think the whole human race needs to have uh, so anyway um, the other part of it is maybe, maybe we ought to you know create a community channel or something you know and we just post our our um, arguments on this one subject to that channel uh, but anyway uh, if nothing else this is a good test of our our uh, capacity to um, articulate our various theories, um, our belief systems, whatever, to um, see if we're capable of persuasive arguments, see if there's a, a capacity to get anywhere. Because if, um, I mean, we have to concede that we're basically all open minded and we're both, uh, we're all um, scientifically literate and. Uh, it's you know you expect failure when you're you know, arguing with a four-year-old, but you don't expect failure in uh, <coughs> you know when, when you are arguing to an audience that can understand what you're saying. And so it is kind of um, a good test for all of us to sit here and try to figure out what's missing, what what we're we're not getting to. And so I can only go by, you know, Matt's video, it's, you know, it's a lot of stuff, you know, such and such who wrote a book and says blah, 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 and another guy wrote in a book and says this and that, and, and it's, they're not saying anything that's straight line direct enough for me to argue with. I mean, it's all this, you know, hocus pocus, you, you know, life is too triangular to be, you know, hypothesized into a by lithogram. I mean, it's just, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, it just, it's crap, uh, you know, it's just way too many words. I mean, there's a line from an old, you know, the movie Amadeus, you know, the Mo Mozart story, and the, there's a king, you know, and the king says to Mozart, uh, too many notes, you know, <laughs> in criticizing his music, and he explains that, you know, the human ear can only perceive so many notes, and so you got too many notes, they're, they're superfluous, they don't make any sense because the brain can't perceive them. And, uh, you know, I, that's with too many words, Matt, just too many words. They wrap around convoluted words. You've got to spell it out a little, a little, a little straight, yeah, you know. I mean, I, yeah, maybe I'm not getting it, but it just sounds like babble to me. Um, so anyway, the one argument I could glean from your video was, um, that a sticking point for you is that this natural system, uh, you know, energy doesn't have any motivation to become more complex. You're even suggested it makes energy more vulnerable to become matter. And I would argue that it is in the design of energy. It is basically as soon as it shoots out into space, it begins to condensate. It is a, a natural function. Uh, it has these gravitational forces, you could call them. I mean, obviously they're on a different level, so they're but they're forces of attraction, if you want to call them that. I mean, we don't think of. I mean, it's a scary word, attraction, because you will imply that it means some deliberate act. I mean, and so to me, gravitational is you know makes it more obvious because obviously we don't associate uh, gravity with any emotion gravity just does its thing and uh, that's all energy is doing it's got this built-in mechanism that lends it towards um, associations energy wants to associate with energy uh, with other energy and um, the same is true with matter and molecules elements they still retain this this capacity to combine. Uh, the attraction may not be as strong, they may not 
um, pull each other towards each other but when they do associate they can combine quite easily their mechanism encourages that combination that combining and then uh, once you get to the stage of chemical complexity where you have a reproducing um, compound a life form um, then a new mechanism takes charge and that's the natural selection process and it is inherently to that um, compounds benefit to um, become more complex. I mean complexity makes it, it, although it is more vulnerable in physical structure because of the complexity, it is stronger because of its capacity to adapt and form itself to an environment and survive. And so that is survival of the fittest, that is natural selection, and things will tend to become more complex. Um, I say there's a limit to that complexity. I say there's a, a, a natural absolute that you reach, so to speak, or a, a point where, like the speed of light, as you get closer to it, um, your own mass will make it impossible for you to reach you know, that absolute speed. And I think the same thing happens with complexity in, in the living world that um, a certain amount is good, um, it's encouraged, it makes you wiser and more capable in your environment, and, but there's a point where the complexity ends. And I think, you know, obviously there's a level of sophistication in the, the organisms around us, some of them maybe even a billion years old, like some insects, and the complexity, the raw complexity, probably isn't any more dramatic than our own. Uh, they have a central nervous system, they have organs, they have structure, and, uh, you know, the only, th and then, like I said, there's all these, these stages, and then I've, I've also made the point that intelligence is what separates us from these animals, and intelligence is essentially another life form. It is like the stage between compound and reproducing compound. There's a stage between, um, you know this this living organism and then intelligence because intelligence grows by its own rules it has its own natural selection process it has its own uh, because it's it's not in the individual it's in it's built on years and years of learning and acquiring understanding about the world we live in and so that intelligence grows by a new set of rules uh, and that's a new a new bit of, of complexity but it is not complexly, complexity directly related to the physical structure. We can have the same physical structure and without education we are morons, we are animals. It is not um, innate intelligence, it is separate from us. We, we merely possess it. We don't, we don't uh, you know, own it, we rent it. Uh, I don't know how to exactly put it, but that's it is another life form. It is another level of complexity, distinct from the rules. A different set of rules apply because it is distinct. Um, so anyway, um, I think that does. You know, I think I've explained that. So so I mean, that's I can only take it like I said, an argument at a time. There is a natural t tendency in the structure of the material universe that encourages um, association. If, that, if you want to call that complexity, fine, but the association, the combining, the condensing of matter. Uh, it's a natural process, and there's no need for a, um, to wonder at how it's possible. It seems, I, I don't know how, I don't know what your stumbling block is. I mean, four billion years is an incredibly long time for matter to achieve, you know, the great ape. Um, and it's only been a short time that intelligence has been alive and intelligence has been involving. Uh, and so we really don't know its exact course. Uh, we don't know its destiny. Um, but in terms of life, um, yeah, I think we've peaked. Uh, you know, complexity-wise, we'll get, we'll get different. We'll, we, we could look funnier, we could do this, we could do that. But, you know, uh, there's not going to be a huge jump